Hello and welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. President Obama stopped in Burma last week during a trip to Asia. He's the first sitting U.S. president to visit the country, and he was there mainly to encourage the transition to democracy of Burma, which is also called Myanmar. Now, the significance of this was not lost on the Chinese. Before that, China could be called uh, the main political influencer in Burma under the former military junta there. And we'll talk today with Jason Ma and Matt Ganesta about how President Obama's trip to Burma was part of the strategic U.S. pivot towards the Asia-Pacific region and what that has to do with China. Thanks both for joining us today. So Burma's relationship with China, it would be fair to call it a pretty close one. Yes, over the last 20 plus years, China has been the major investor in Burma. Uh, since the 80s, under the, the Burmese military junta, there's been about $20 billion of foreign direct investment. About three quarters of that comes from China. China has invested heavily in a number of things, including uh, in 2010, they invested uh, almost a billion dollars in mining. Um, there were plans to build a major dam along the Irrawaddy uh, River that runs through China and then, and then Burma. Um, interestingly, it started to change last year. In March, of course, Burma started to go through this transition. And then in November, they, they or September rather, they cut off, uh, they suspended the construction of this Irrawaddy Dam, much to the dismay of the Chinese regime. The Ch uh, China has long considered Burma to be a very important strategic country for them. It gives them uh, access to the Indian Ocean, potentially. There's a lot of natural resources, mining, uh, forestry and, and so on. So China has been very important to Burma and Burma has been very important to China. Um, and of course, now the question is, is that relationship changing? So right. I, I think uh, it's true. Uh, is there is a very close tie between the kind of previous military government in Burma and kind of the Chinese government because uh, Chinese government probably is one of the few kind of a rich government who don't care. They have the dictatorship, dictatorship over there. But uh, at the people's level, I mean, general population, I don't think uh, the uh, overall, especially in the past couple of years, because of the uh, greedy kind of uh, resource-wise uh, uh, grab from China, um, all those uh, ordinary Chinese uh, Burman people, they don't really kind of have a very kind of a kind of strong kind of a close feeling to towards China, and also because recently uh, trans, uh, transition to democratic form and people really kind of uh, um, kind of uh, know they will have a democratic future. In, in this sense, they even kind of more lean towards to the Western world. That's the reason when Obama visit was visiting there, people were standing on the street to kind of welcome Obama because they really need. Uh, a Western power like U.S. to be there to balance uh, um, the influence of China. People, I mean, ordinary people on the street, they really like the present, present and the presentation of the U.S. there in that region. Yeah, you definitely don't see that kind of welcome for Chinese leaders when they visit. No, nobody is standing on the street welcoming Hu Jintao. Or, right. yeah. <laughs> so what, let's talk about Obama's visit. You know, the U.S. has moved really quickly in terms of normalizing relationship with uh, Burma. Uh, you know, they've uh, gone from basically being a pariah state to suddenly, you know, Secretary of State Clinton goes there. Uh, Obama becomes the first president to go to that country. Uh, he, you know, goes up there and meets with the president and with, uh, you know, uh, opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi. It's very much like all these kind of photo ops, these kinds of like very quick acceptance of the new government. Yeah, well, I mean, Burma's not really a democracy right now. They've only been in this transition for about a year and a half. And Ten Sen, who's now the president, was also the prime minister under the junta. So there hasn't been a full transition to democracy by any means. But what does it mean that President Obama's going there? A lot of it has to do with, as you said, the pivot to Asia, the strategic pivot, and of course, China. So, yeah, now U.S. clearly is forming a circle around China. And, uh, you know, China, if you look at a map, China is the single biggest country, most powerful country, especially in the past 10 years, it became uh, such kind of a single powerful country in that region. And right now, they are the second biggest economic body in the world. And uh, the ambitions from the Chinese government became uh, kind of bigger and bigger. So they want to dominate that area. But meanwhile, a lot of the smaller countries surrounding China, they feel kind of threatened 
I mean, originally China is not that strong. Kind of Indian can still be somewhat a balanced China, and uh, Japan can balance China. But right now, nobody can really kind of challenge China in any other way. And meanwhile, China do and kind of resource wise, they need a lot of resource. So they kind of go to all these kind of Southeast Asian country to grab resource. And also territory wise, there is China, uh, South China Sea. I mean, there is a lot of argument about a small. Kind of stones and island over there, and uh, so so this kind of thing make all the countries surrounding China very very uncomfortable, and they need a country to balance the influence of China. So this is a moment, uh, kind of U.S. kind of smartly grab this opportunity. They get there, they are welcomed to be there. Well, the U.S. has, uh, you know, President Obama has denied that the U.S. strategic pivot to Asia is to contain China. Well, I mean, he has to deny it, but I mean, <laughs> realistically, that it is China. But it's interesting because the, you know, the Chinese regime's dominance uh, of those smaller countries in the region, including the way that the people in those other countries feel uh, mistreated by China or Chinese investment, has actually opened the door to the U.S. To step in and sort of be the hero that kind of balances out that Chinese dominance. I mean, you can't say that all the countries, you know, don't like China investing in them or giving economic aid. Well, I mean, they all have, I think, mixed feelings, right? I mean, you look at a country like, you know, even Japan, that's been、uh, a long time, you know, ally of the U.S. and has this, this row with China, but there's still a lot of Japanese exports to China.、Uh, it's still a massive, massive market. So it's a it's a mixed bag, probably in every case. But I think there's still a feeling among the people in most of these countries that、uh, they would prefer to have that relationship with the U.S. versus China, or weight more heavily in terms of the U.S. At least in terms of the U.S. policy towards those countries is,、uh, or U.S. investment doesn't seem quite as as brutal or forceful as it does when coming from China. Right. Right. You can see, like、uh, even like Mongolian recently, Mongolian consider. Like a, a country will try to maintain a triangle relationship with the Russian, China, and the Western world. And recently, they just joined the Organization for Security and, and the Development in Europe, which is a, indeed a kind of something organized by U.S. And basically, that's kind of Western world、uh, organization. They join that, so to show a, a strong lean towards the Western world. It's because of the influence of China becoming strong and strong. They are afraid they are losing their identity because of the economic influence and also political influence in that area. So China, would you say they are specifically and strategically trying to become like a dominant power in the Asia Pacific region? I don't think they are there yet, but、uh, everything points to that direction. And because they're kind of、uh, the, the 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 way they handle the South Asian Sea, they, historically they just put it aside. Right now, they kind of really kind of bring that on the table, or even kind of maintain a pretty strong tone.、Um, oh, even like in the last week, they got in trouble with some countries because they started putting a map of China on the passport that you know includes all these disputed territories under Chinese rule. Right. It's kind of a but、uh, I think it's more like.、Um, We have to admit, like the image of a Chinese government is not that great. I mean, it's not like、uh, it's represent freedom, represent democratic. It's still considered that although it's rich now, it's kind of a powerful economically now, but、uh, it's still a country people consider it's kind of a, it's kind of a dictatorship kind of dic- dictatorship kind of controlled country, and、uh, it's kind of very unpredictable. Predictable,、uh, so so people just kind of feel like a very uneven kind of when they deal with China. They don't know kind of what China will lead them to. Well, let me ask. We've been talking mostly about how you know the U.S. pivot to Asia, these other Asian countries,、uh, how that relates to China in terms of these like a kind of. Outside relation, foreign affairs relationship with these countries, but there was an interesting argument made、uh, in the Wall Street Journal last week. There was a, a blog post actually where、uh, one of their reporters spoke with an anonymous,、uh, you know, Communist Party member who supposedly has、uh, high ties to the leadership. And they, the argument that this Communist Party member made was that you know if. Uh, the U.S. pivots towards the Asia Pacific. It's going to hurt Chinese reform. It's going to keep the leadership from being able to reform in China because the new leadership needs kind of a benign environment in order to be able to reform. I don't know what what they are trying to argue for. I mean, basically, we all know in the 
in the future, Asian will be the develop engine for the world. European is not developing. They are in recession and the US is slowing development. Uh, Asian will be the engine for economic development for the world for uh, for few for few of its future. So it's strategically very important for US to be there. So in this sense, I don't think US can say, okay, in order China for China to re reform, I just leave that right away. I mean, a lot of country want US to be there. So when you see that uh, as an argument to kind of to let kind of US leave kind of Asian away, which is kind of very difficult because every country act in a way like uh, maximize their own interest. That's the world uh, playground. Yeah, you know, this idea that the Chinese leadership needs a benign international environment to institute political reform, in, in a word, nonsense. It, that's it, absolutely not how it works in political reality. It's like, a, you know, a, a bully says, oh, you know, leave me alone and don't punish me and, and I will improve on my own. Uh, we've seen this argument coming from, you know, Chinese leaders for decades. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, give us uh, money, let us into the WTO, we're going to reform. Uh, you know, give us the Olympics and we're going to improve human rights. And, there, you know, human rights has gotten worse since the Olympics, not better. It's, if you look at the last two decades of history in China, it shows that, uh, you know, when the, when the U.S. Or the, or the rest of the world sort of allows the Chinese leaders space to improve on their own, reforms just don't get done. So if the U.S. really wants there to be political reform in China, it has to step up that pressure. Um, we know from you know, history and as well as from our own interactions with, with people that when you put pressure uh, on someone to change, they're more likely to change if they're already resistant to changing on their own. Right, I guess uh, indeed uh, for Chinese people, this may not be a bad thing because uh, because of the pressure, constant pressure from the Western world, uh, there is change in Burma, although it's not there yet, but it's kind of to the positive direction. And this view can kind of put real pressure to Chinese government. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. scares them a lot, yeah, I think, yeah, to see. Uh, right, right, right. Because uh, so I think uh, when the U.S. kind of switch their kind of strategic importance to the Asian Pacific area, which is uh, probably good for U.S., economically but meanwhile for all the make sure all the surrounding country have a balanced kind of thing uh, so that the local stability is maintained and also like example like Burma kind of a, go to the kind of democratic direction that's also a positive thing so if everything around China is going to the democratic way and China will have a bigger kind of pressure to go to that direction and that's exactly what the leaders don't want Yet it's also exactly what the Chinese people need. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us and talking about this issue. And thank you for watching. For more on this and other topics in China, join us at ntd.tv.